2's Labor Day weekend kickoff. Marcus Hagan, some big cleats to fill. He's the new man at quarterback for Virginia, taking over from Matt Schaub, who has departed for the NFL. His Virginia Cavaliers start out on the roll at on the road, rather, taking on Temple in Philadelphia. Meanwhile, speaking of quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers. 19 touchdowns, just five picks last season for a Cal team, ranked its highest preseason ranking in 50 years. California starts out at Air Force. And welcome in, everyone, to another Saturday and, in fact, another season of college football here on ESPN2. I'm Matt Weiner. I'll be your ringmaster throughout the fall. Okay, here's the deal. Split doubleheader here on ESPN2 for our noon Eastern time game. For those of you not in ACC or Big East markets, the rest of the country is going to go out to that Cal Air Force game, a 10 a.m. local start. But we're going to start out in Philadelphia, Virginia, taking on Temple at uh, the Eagles' home field. That's where Temple plays their games. Let's send you out to Philly, Virginia, and the Owls. Lincoln Financial Field, home of the Philadelphia Eagles, is also home to the Temple Owls. They start their 2004 season, hosting 20th ranked Virginia. Temple starts its final year in the Big East. The Cavs try to make some noise in the new look ACC. Greetings and welcome, everyone, to Philadelphia. Glad you could join us. Dave Ryan, John Congemi alongside. It's Hawk about Virginia, John. Hopes are very high. The most season tickets sold ever, 39,000 in Charlottesville. But Al Gross says, wait a minute. We've got to prove ourselves first as a good team on paper, but on the field, maybe a different story. Yeah, but it's a new look ACC, to tell you the truth, with Miami and Virginia Tech, and of course, Florida State getting all the recognition. There's a 20th ranked Virginia Cavalier team that feels like they're ready, they're poised to challenge for the ACC conference title. They have a terrific core of linebackers, a lot of bullets on defense offensively, all five starters back on that offensive line. Now, for Temple, they have one bullet. Uh, Maybe a cannon at quarterback, 6'2", 240 pounds, Walter Washington. He not only has to play good, he has to play great today. And he started their final five games, folks, last year. For Virginia, Ahmad Brooks, the player to watch. Just a sophomore and returning kicks as well for UVA. Electrifying tackler, sideline to sideline, and an unbelievable hitter defensively. We shall see, as a kick returner, what he can offer as well. Al Groh told us yesterday that would be the case. We'd see Brooks in that role. And the coach is true to his word. Bobby Wallace starts another season here at Temple. The final in the Big East. He hopes to have a conference affiliation with a new league next year. Al Groh says, I love the new ACC. Yeah, he was a little big for him. Ryan Lux starts the season for Temple. And it will be Brooks at his three. Ahmad Brooks, the linebacker. A big run back to begin the year for UVA, the big fella. How about the run back for Ahmad Brooks? 40-yard return, and Virginia has a great start. Talk about getting your team excited right off the bat. Have your linebacker take it back. Immediate instant field position for Virginia. Marcus Higgins begins the post-Matt Schaub era at Virginia. He has started a couple of games in his career when Schaub was hurt with a shoulder problem. Third career start for him here today. Schaub set more than 20 passing records in Charlottesville. Lundy tries the right side, and a good start for him as well. Across the 45-yard line. Pick up of three for Lundy. The backs and receivers we told you about. Very valuable. Pierman and Michael Johnson will see time as well. Michael McGrew returns at receiver on the line. Elton Brown braces the cover of the UVA preseason media guide. An Outland Trophy candidate. And Al Gross says the offensive line, bigger, more experienced, especially when he came a few years ago. He was using true freshman for the play action. Higgins is throwing. He's got McGrew. And he'll have a first down, 45-yard line of Temple. Up front defensively for the Owls. Rodney Wormley returns after missing off last year on the right end with a knee injury. His coaches tell us night and day having him back on the field offers leadership in addition to ability. The linebackers are the best aspect of the Temple defense. Ryan Walls led all Owl tacklers last year with 148 stops. Secondary not tested yet. Jermaine Hargraves, a JC transfer, the same JC in California, Tim Brown, their new running back played. Out of the shotgun, Hagans keeps. He can run, we know that. 
And he's across the 45-yard line, pickup of three. And we'll get to the 42. Hargraves makes the stop. Just a few minutes, we'll be taking many of you out to the start of the Cal Air Force game, with the exception of viewers in the Big East and ACC country. For those of you waiting on that one, we'll get you out of the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs in time for kickoff and keep you up to date throughout the afternoon on this game as well. Lundy wrestled down a loss. Lawrence Wade from a secondary spot comes up, makes a big play for Temple. Forcing third and long. Yeah, Lawrence Wade, a former running back, comes out of the secondary, shot out of a cannon. There you see his 6'1", 195. But you like the way Virginia has started the game with their quarterback, Hagan's Got him an easy completion on the outside to McGrew early. Get him on the corner, try to make Temple's defense play honest early in this football game. Third and 11. The initial drive of the 2004 season for Virginia. Shotgun for Hagan's. Time. Now Dance is right. He'll run. And he stopped well short of the first down. Good pursuit, Eric Carpenter, defensive end spot. Pickup of seven for Hagans. And Temple's got to be boosted by that. Well, you love to see your tight end, especially wide open down the field. You see him break contain. He gets under over Troy Bennett, the linebacker, and he's all by himself. But Marcus Hagans, under duress, could not find him. Look for them to go back to the tight end vertically down the field. Sean Johnson won the punting job as Tim Brown stands deep. Brown, the J.C. transfer we mentioned earlier from California, who set all kinds of records as a back out there. They're excited about him at Temple. Johnson will try to angle the far corner. And it does put out of bounds. In a good spot. Officially marked to the 16-yard line. Punting a big problem according to Algro last year. Their net punting was not very effective at all. Walter Washington. We talked about early in the broadcast over the last five games of the year for Temple. Now they went 0-5, but he had one big game against West Virginia. Four touchdowns on the ground. He's a wrecking ball type quarterback. He really is. 6'2", 240, and he was the only quarterback I've ever talked to that actually could not wait to play a regular season game, so either he could hit somebody or he could be hit. So he's an exciting player to watch. Virginia defensively, folks, perhaps the best in the ACC. They boast some linebackers who are all world. Brown carries, breaks one tackle nicely, and with a second effort across the 20-yard line of the 22, picks up six yards. So Tim Brown, first career start today, a spectacular J.C. career in California. He's got great speed from Stockton, California. Receiver Phil Goodman expected to stretch defenses this year, give Temple a deep ball threat they haven't had in the past. Booch Ebay is back as well. Their O-line. John Gross, a returning starter. Six Owls are back from last year's team. He started off 12 games, including a few on the offensive line. So they have experience, just not winning games. Exactly. Experience. Quick handoff. It's Brown again. He's got nice yardage. Across the 25 to about the 28, and he'll have a first down for Temple. On the UVA defensive front, and Chris Canny has all the tools. 6'7", 290. He can run in ball pursuit. Brendan Schmidt and Hoffman are three-year starters. Linebacker strength of the defense that we talked about. Al Grill tells us this core, physically imposing as any NFL group you'll see. The secondary, though, has to be tested. That's what Al Grill is expecting today from Walter Washington. Marquise Weeks moves from running back to D-back this year and starts. Two nice runs from Brown. First down. Washington to keep. Drags tacklers across the 35. Walter Washington, an impressive run. Kai Parham, the star sophomore linebacker for UVA, trips him up after a pickup of six. Dave, that's a perfect example of a guy that's hard to bring down. Now, that was a quarterback sweep, if you want to call it all the way. No option involved. Walter Washington following Tim Brown off the left side, but he'll be hard to bring down with one or two Cavalier tacklers. You're going to have to run to the football, and that's a group that can run to the football, but he'll have to take down two or three guys to bring him to the turf. Second and three. First drive of the Temple season. Washington keeps again. 
Trying to use his wrecking ball tight mentality to get through tacklers. He'll be short of a first down. So a little taste to start your day of college football with uh, Temple and Virginia. It's an appetizer for those of you going to the Cal Air Force game. For those of you outside of Big East and ACC country, we take you out to Colorado. Gary Bender, Anne Marie Anderson, and Kelly Stauffer. From Falcon Stadium, it's the season opener for the 14th ranked California Golden Bears and the Falcons of the United States Air Force Academy. It's an overcast day here in Colorado Springs for college football, a cool snap here. Temperature at 57 degrees, mostly cloudy, but a very pleasant day for football in the Rocky Mountains. Hi, everybody. With my broadcast partner, Kelly Stoffer, I'm Gary Bender. And California, Kelly, has not been ranked this high in half a century, and the expectations are soaring for a special year. And the expectations ought to be high, Gary. This is the most talented team that Coach Tedford has had here at Cal thus far. And these are two of the reasons why right here. A very good quarterback, exceptional receiver, and probably the most dynamic combination quarterback receiver in the entire country. And here they come, part of the pageantry of Falcon Stadium. The pregame fly by is a 15 eagle. Twice the speed of sound. And this plane can climb at a 90 degree angle as you witness it here at Falcon Stadium. Well, you know, Air Force uh, will open today, Kelly, with 16 new starters, including quarterback Sean Carney, who's the first freshman quarterback to start an opening day in the 49-year history of the academy. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. And the butterflies in his stomach right now are about the size of that F-15 that we just saw fly over. But this is a special young man. Fisher to Barry, remember, has been here 21 seasons. He's had 20 opportunities to play a freshman. This is the first one that he has feel special enough to put on the field amazing this year to bury his 21st year a rocky mountain icon he's an original the winningest coach in service academy history 18 times his team has had a 500 or better record jeff tedford he's 42 years old in his third year he's given cal back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time in 12 years he has turned Cal into a top 20 program in two seasons. He's one of the hottest coaches in the country. Well, Cal, interestingly, Kelly, won the toss, did not defer. They re want to receive. They want the football right away. And that gives you insight to the mindset of this football team, particularly Coach Tedford. They want the ball. They feel their offense cannot be stopped. They want to get points on the board early. And so Michael Greenaway will be kicking off for the academy. He is a senior out of Virginia. They'll have a different place kicker. He'll do the kicking off. And going back deep is going to be Marshawn Lynch, a freshman, and Terrell Williams. As we're ready to get this season underway. You ready to go, partner? Yeah, I'm ready to go. And the sun now is starting to uh, slip through the clouds. A crowd of over 42,000 on hand, and we're underway. Greenaway hits it deep. There'll be no return here. So let's now meet the third member of our broadcast team. Let's go sideline, and here's Ann Marie Anderson. Well, guys, we're at 5,800 feet above sea level here. Cal coach Jeff Tedford didn't want his team to be intimidated by the altitude, so he took him on a little road trip to Tahoe, which is 6,200 feet above altitude. The idea wasn't to get any kind of a physical benefit. You can't really do that in one day. It was to give him the psychological boost of knowing that they'd be able to handle the altitude. He said he worked them extra hard extra fast and afterwards gathered the team around in a circle and said how you doing how you feeling this way they all knew that they could handle the altitude and catch their breath without any kind of a problem in fact their only problem was their helmets were too tight <laughs> aaron Rodgers is good quarterback as there is when nation comes out throwing and he completes his first pass to chase lyman and lyman picks up the first down now Rodgers is the guy who exploded on the scene last year a quarterback no one had heard of coming out of junior college in kelly he's poised He's mobile and what an arm. He has absolutely everything you would want in a major college quarterback. And now he has to take that potential and move it into realizing that potential. And this is the year to do that. He had knee surgery in the offseason. But even with that bad knee, I was so impressed in watching game tapes, how he could move around. Well, and what happened in rehabbing from that knee surgery, he also went from 6'2", 200 pounds a year ago to 220 pounds today. He's bigger, he's stronger, 
and he's more experienced. Watch out for this young man. We've got a player down for Air Force right now. That is the delay as we start this football game after they picked up the first down on that completion to Chase Lyman. Well, this uh, California team, when they inserted Rodgers into the starting lineup, everything started to take off. I mean, the numbers jumped, and they ended up playing in the inside bowl, beating Virginia Tech in the Phoenix area. And uh, Jeff Tedford, a guy who inherited a football team that was 1-10. and ten. Absolutely. That's phenomenal. And he turned it around quickly. And in, when they introduced him to the media out in Berkeley, that he said in his original press conference they would have a winning season in 2002. They went on to be 7-5, and 8-6 and six last year with that bowl victory that you mentioned. The guy that's hurt, by the way, is Mark Carlson. He is their safety. You can see before 1-10. and 10, And uh, Carlson, uh, a junior out of Colorado Springs, there he is, number 21. He ducked his head and took a pretty good shot. Yeah, and that's the one thing the Air Force cannot afford. They're, the backup right there is Julian Madrid, a freshman, and there's freshmen that they'll have to play today if they have many injuries at a handful of positions. So he is down right now. That's a reason for the delay. As uh, Carlson, a young man who comes from a, a background of military, his dad is an Air Force Academy grad, a retired major, and so we're going to go away for a little bit as we uh, await the status of Carlson, no score, just underway from Falcon Stadium. Installed remote start. Chevy Malibu, an American revolution. Ads on taxis are popular. Great idea for 7 Up. Ready, Topher? You okay? Jaws of life would be good. No? Finally, a travel rewards program you can get excited about. Introducing Trip Rewards. Earn points every time you stay at any Super 8. You're going to love the rewards. Sign up for Trip Rewards at Super8.com. More news from K-Swiss. The next wave of color. Black with silver. Or red. White with green. Spin it like this. Put the spin on it. Dial it up. Dial it down. I wear my K-Swiss like this. For my summer look. Put the spin on it. I wear them hooked. Day and night. Put the spin on it. My case was. Put your spin on it. Case with. At CDW, we ship over 100,000 IT products to customers every day. So how can we do it even faster? One word. Wormholes. Want to go wireless fast? CDW has Sony Vio S-Series notebooks. Lightweight with a large screen and cutting-edge Centrino technology. Now I just need to figure out that whole space-time continuum thing. For the top brand IT products you need, shipped out fast, count on CDW. For the right technology, right away. You're looking at Mark Carlson. He walked off the field on his own power. They're just checking him out right now. Julian Madrid, a freshman, has replaced him at the free safety spot. As we pick up the play, first down now at the 31-yard line. Aaron Rodgers starting out with a completion to Chase Lyman. There's Madrid from San Diego, an outstanding baseball player in high school as well as a football player. Lyman will come in motion. They take the end around, and they get up the middle that time. And that is Chris Mandarino, the pullback. And let's take a look now at the rest of this uh, offense for Cal. MacArthur had 85 catches last year. And... Uh, I tell you what, Garrett Cross is one of the reasons they have Rodgers at quarterback. They play together in junior college. Marvin Phillip may be their best offensive one, the very smart. And O'Callaghan is six foot seven in one of the tackle spots. Second down coming up. Make it seven yards to go. Rodgers back to throw. Near side. The completion is made to Jeff MacArthur, the man we just mentioned. MacArthur's going to be knocked out a yard short of the first down. They go to a 3-3-5 for Air Force. Ryan Carter solid up front. He's a senior out of Wisconsin. John Rosinski, one of the most intense players, one of the best players in the Mountain West Conference at linebacker. 
And in the uh, secondary, Danny Poland is from Pittsburgh, and he went to Dan Marino's High School, Central Catholic. Brzezinski is the guy to watch, number 48 for Air Force. There's the handoff now to J.J. Arrington, who led the Pac-10 last year in yards per carry, average-wise, 5.7. He's got the first down. Jordan Wilkie makes the tackle for the Falcons. Cal has come out, and they've had four different personnel groupings in the first five plays, and that's really what, what Coach Tedford does, is he scouts the, the team early, putting a lot of different personnel groupings in, seeing how the defense responds to that, and then he builds his game plan from there. First down now for the Golden Bears at the 41-yard line. As we mentioned, they won the toss. They did not defer. They wanted the football. They're starting to drive effectively. Handoff comes to Arrington again, and Arrington... A senior out of Nashville, North Carolina, pounds it across the 50 to the 47 of Air Force. And just like in any game, Air Force has to stop the run first. If Cal gets away with doing this and establishes the running game, it makes Rodgers and his really quartet of very talented receivers just that much more dangerous this afternoon. So the first down, or make that second down in a yard to go. They mark the ball at the 47 now of Air Force. Rodgers has three wideouts, two to the near side. Arrington is the single running back. Rodgers has gained about 20 pounds from a year ago. He's going to go on the option this time. He's got the first down, and that's not surprising. We expected that. Coach Tedford talked about they would run the option from time to time, and Cameron Hodge made the tackle. You know, it's just one more way that this offense puts pressure on the defense and let Rodgers get outside a little bit. People have him think... or think about him as being a drop back quarterback he actually can move around quite well and runs the option extremely well when you look at the size of this guy he's 6 2 220 pounds out of chico california a guy who we talked about his passing ability but his mobility is just as impressive in a lot of ways first down at the 42 of the air force rogers wants to throw steps up in the pocket going deep he overthrows his intended receiver at the five yard line Pretty good coverage that time. Chase Lyman, who's a big target at six foot four, was back there. And that's what Rogers is going to see out of this Air Force secondary almost the entire afternoon. Very seldom do they play man to man in this 3 3 5 scheme. They'll generally have the free safety in center field, and he can't get greedy. Move down the field, take what the defense give you, gives you, move the chains. This is a potent, imaginative offense, exciting. I think they have about everything in the playbook That's you can imagine. We just saw Chase Lyman, 6'4", 210 pounds. Second down and 10 now for Rodgers. Rodgers straight back, holds the ball high, dumps it off. He completes it to Arrington. Arrington dies for what may be the first down. He's very close at the 30-yard line, so Arrington getting a lot of work early. Kenny Smith over to make the tackle, the senior. Out of Kirtland, New Mexico, an 11-yard pickup on the play. Well, that's a very good job of being patient at the quarterback position. Allow that zone defense that he's going to get from the Air Force Falcons to drop deep into their zones and then drop, drop it to Arrington, who's a very good receiver out of the backfield. Last year, he caught 21 passes. Fisher to Barry, concerned about this potent offense. As well, he should be. This California team ranked as high as they've been ranked since back in the days of Happy Waldorf for the years that Cal went to three straight Rose Bowls. Three wideouts, two to the near side on a first down. Hand off to Terrell Williams, a forgotten man who has been hurt in the past. The junior out of San Diego getting some playing time, able to negotiate the 25. Cameron Hodge on the stop again. An important story to keep an eye on early in this game is Air Force brings a different look than any other team that Cal will see the entire year and their linebackers move around a lot. This offensive line that hasn't been together very long has to sort out that look and block it, and they're doing a great job early in the game thus far. Second down and a long four. Cal with the opening drive of the game. Rogers back, here's his mobility. Running, gets close, and I think he does have the first down, and that is the added advantage of a mobile quarterback pulling the ball down and getting the first down. A mobile quarterback, Gary, and an experienced quarterback. Because that time, there was nothing downfield. He's looking downfield. His attention is in the right place. You know, that plot goes off in your head. Get up as much, get to the line of scrimmage, get as much as you can. And in this case, it's a first down. Keep the chains moving. So Rodgers able to scramble to the first down. He's at the 19-yard line now. Very poised guy. 
This guy was a third team Juco All-American out of Butte College. And all of a sudden, he's a household name in college football. Rodgers buying time, throws it, and able to make the completion to Arrington. Arrington going up high. He's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down, just outside the 10-yard line. So Arrington really figuring in a lot of what California's doing on this opening series. They'll mark it just outside the 10. It'll bring up second down and almost two to go. Arrington, uh, a guy who is really taking over as the starter for the first time. Very talented. They love his lateral ability. And he seamlessly, seemingly, has moved into the starting role. Second down. Hand off Arrington. Arrington going to take it in. Touchdown, California. J.J. Arrington had five touchdowns last year. Gets his first on the 11-yard first up the middle. And that's not a good sign for Air Force. If this Cal team can run the football today, they're going to be incredibly hard to stop. So the opening series, and they wasted no time taking it in at the 11.41 mark of this first quarter. 11-yard touchdown, point after attempt now coming. It'll be Tom Snyder. Out of the hold of Robertson, the backup quarterback, Reggie Robertson, a bad kick, but he somehow it got through. That might be the ugliest extra point we've ever seen. <laughs> but it counts. Here's Arrington. That was a 12-play, 80-yard drive, capped by this slice up the middle. That is sweet. My pride and joy. Oh, it looks new. Like right out of the showroom. Oh, that is one great looking. Whoa, hold on, honey. I'm showing Tom the floor. Nice floor, Joan. Make your garage floor the envy of the neighborhood. You can do it yourself with Rust-Oleum Epoxy Shield Garage Floor Coating. After prep, you're ready to go. Simple as painting a wall. Easy to clean and resist chipping and peeling. This all-inclusive kit is available at home centers, hardware stores, and automotive retailers near you. And now, transform your unfinished basement with Epoxy Shield Basement Floor Coating. and more towing capacity than Ford or Dodge. It's never happened. Chevy Silverado, an American revolution. Red Stripe would like you to visit our beautiful website, redstripebeer.com, where you can see Lennox Lewis box me in a friendly bout. <laughs> Instead, you can see me and Lennox Lewis showing you how to cook fresh fried plantains. Ray Beer! Please drink responsibly. ESPN, happy 25 years. I hope you have 125 better than it in the next 125. Good luck to you. Chris Berman, you're the man, baby. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Rust-Oleum Epoxy Shield. For the ultimate garage floor and the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months, an American revolution. A chapel at the Air Force Academy, California has made a statement early, moving 80 yards in 12 plays. Arrington able to take it in from 11 yards out. Interestingly, Kelly had good balance in that particular series as here is the touchdown run again by Arrington. And Cal is a very balanced team. And right now, Cal is just flat wearing them out up front. And if Air Force doesn't do a better job of getting off the blocks at the line of scrimmage, this is going to be a long afternoon, and we're going to have to see something spectacular out of Carney to even make this a football game. Five passes, seven runs in that initial drive. Benzwanger will kick off. Anthony Benzwanger, redshirt freshman out of Concord, out of that outstanding high school of De La Salle, where they've won 151 straight. Going back deep will be Darnell Stevens and Alec Meserol as Air Force will get the football for the first time. 
11.41 to go in this first quarter, and I tell you, Cal is showing why they're one of the most explosive teams in the country. It's going to be Mesereau. He'll take it up to the 15, bends up to the 20. Mesereau will the 23-yard line, and Air Force will set it up. Sean Carney, a 19-year-old freshman, facing the biggest challenge of his young career. He does come from a big-time high school program, and despite his inexperience, he has quickly earned the respect, Kelly, of this team. He makes some great decisions. Yeah, and, and look for the coaching staff to allow him to get settled down early in this game. They will probably do some things where he doesn't have a whole lot to look at, doesn't have to see the defense, because I guarantee you, Gary, his perspective right now is about the size of, a, <laughs> of the eye of a needle, and that will expand as the game goes along. Well, he came out of a big-time program, playing before 15,000, but this is over 42. There's Adam Cole, the fullback, bouncing forward. Initially, he was knocked backwards, got to the 21, and up front, well, you take a look first at the running backs. Darnell Stevens, a leading rusher a year ago, over 600 yards. And up front, this is an entire new offensive line. Only Ross Weaver has even one start. Robert Cray, they really like him. He is six foot eight out of Tucker, Georgia. Second down now, seven yards to go for the Falcons. Down seven to nothing. Handoff comes to Stevens. Time to go wide at the 30. And lunges forward to the 32-yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Let's take a look at this defense. They have nine starters back. Lorenzo Alexander was a preseason Pac-10 pick. They've had some changes. Sid Slater and Ryan Fultz were named as starters late in this game. And then Donnie McCleskey, Kelly, he might be the best defensive back in the Pac-10. Absolutely everything. 102 tackles, five and a half sacks out of that position a year ago. Third down, the Falcons need to convert here, and they're going to give off to Butler. He's got the corner. He's got the first down. Anthony Butler, who has been plagued with injuries for the last two years out of San Jose, California. Ryan Gutierrez over to make the tackle, but a big first down for the Falcons. And what we've seen so far, Gary, are three plays where young quarterback Carney has not had to think about a thing other than turning around and handing it to a guy who's been there before, as Butler has. And this is what we're going to look for early, but also look for some wrinkles here and there. They want to hit some home runs and get some points on the board. Anthony Butler has been hurt, but he can be a big play guy in this game. And here is a halfback option we're looking for. Justin Hanley throwing the ball up the field. It's incomplete. Justin Hanley trying to hit Alec Messerall. Chuck Peterson, the offensive coordinator, told us they would come out with the halfback option. Hanley, a former high school quarterback, almost made the connection. You can watch him sell it right there. He has it. There's the receiver going down the field. you got to throw the ball just a little bit late, and that's why it's underthrown. He has to come back. Defensive back does a good job of recovering. Get that ball out, and that's the big play they were looking for. I tell you, that might have been catchable. Looking back at that play again as Mesereau went up for it, saw a new wrinkle, and, of course, Fisher Berry said, we're going to go back to the old basic Air Force football. That wasn't very basic there, was it? Nothing basic about that. Second down, 10. Carney is going to uh, keep on this one as he... Has the dive up the middle, fakes it to the fullback, gets close to the 45-yard line. It is. Carney settled down a little bit now. That was his first true read of the game, Gary. He has to read the fullback, whether he's going to give the dive or not. Kel has a guy that is responsible to tackle him. If he doesn't come down the line of scrimmage, Carney just takes it around the end, and he tried to do it that time. Carney was at the prep school last year. He's 5'10", 195-pounder. His dad was a law enforcement Officer Curtis Grantham is down now for Air Force. He has been nicked up in this uh, fall camp. He is the junior out of Aurora, Colorado, the right guard, and he's down right now. So early in this game, Air Force getting nicked up a little bit. Earlier was Mark Carlson, and now it's Grantham, the guy they call Junkyard G. He's <laughs> a delightful guy to get to meet him, and of course, one of the things the Cal coaches said, I thought it was so good. He says, we know when we play Air Force that we're going to face some awesome guys, some guys who will not quit and with great character. Right, and Air Force, is, their tradition here is built on guys like that, but they can't afford to get them hurt. The people listening at home hurt us right at the beginning of this telecast. All five guys up front are brand new. They have experience, but they don't have experience starting. But if you're starting five new guys. That means the guys behind them don't have much yeah. experience either. 
Well, you could see the Corps. They came marching in here on this uh, day as we're on the uh, foot of the Rocky Mountain, the Rampart Range. A crowd of over 42,000 as um, Air Force this year has seven home games, four of them in the Mountain West Conference play. And, and Cal, on the other hand, Gary, starts out four out of the first five on the road, and they want to get off to a quicker start because they think they have the team to do something nationally, but they got off to a slow start a year ago, starting one and three. So Grantham's going to have to be assisted off the field. Tyler Dohalo will be the guy to replace him. He's a sophomore out of Conyers, Georgia. But again, they are so in in that offensive line experience wise and already one of their starters down you go from a inexperienced junior in Grantham to a less experienced sophomore in the hollow so it'll be interesting to see how he responds so we come back now to play third down and still seven yards to go for the Falcons down seven to nothing here's Carney on a rollout up the field he completes the pass that should be a first down Darnell Stevens on the receiving end and he got it by a yard a yard for the first down. And traditionally, Gary, third and seven is not the down and distance that Air Force wants to make a living at, but this is exactly what Carney brings to the table that past Air Force quarterbacks haven't. He's a very accurate thrower of the football. That was nothing fancy. Roll, roll right and throw the ball to the flat, but you have to do it accurately and on time, and he did both. I tell you, Carney gets it done. You watch him throw the football, Kelly, and sometimes it's not pretty, but he gets the ball there, and there was a good example of it. Stevens on the receiving end. Here's Carney now on the option. Gives off to Adam Cole, the fullback. And for more on Carney, let's go down to Anne Marie. Guys, Sean Carney spent last year at the Academy's prep school. It's kind of like a free year. It's not high school. It's not college. It's just a year to mature physically and emotionally. And for Carney, it was a year to learn Air Force's complicated triple option offense. He was smart, though. He sought out Chance Herridge and had him teaching the finer points. Chance, remember, ran this offense for the last few years. They spent time on the field and in the classroom. And in the end, he said that he was very, very much helped, though, because nobody knew he was going to start. Yeah, and Chance really did a good job. Not only did he just visit with him next to the nose wise, but he just put his arm around him, encouraged him, talked about some of the finer points of the game. As you see Carney there pitching to Chris Holstead, and uh, they're able to pick up some yardage, bring up a third down and still three. And Gary, I've watched Chance here, as you have in the last couple of years, play a lot of football, and he was a tremendous player, and he didn't even get a, a, a sniff of the, of the game field as a true freshman. That's it right. gives you an indication of what talent Carney is. And I think Carney's a better passer than Chance here. I mean, there was nobody tougher than Chance, and he could run the ball. He was slippery. There's Carney keeping the football, and he's got the first down. So this is exactly what Fisher to Barry wanted is to counter that 80-yard touchdown run, grind it out, get some ball control going. And Carney's doing a very good job. He has this guy to read, whether he attacks the fullback or not, he comes down to tackle him. You pull it as the quarterback and get upfield the first green grass that you see. He's doing a very good job, as a quarterback has to in any system, Gary, is move the chains, and he's doing a great job thus far. Boy, you need this after that impressive drive by Cal. So Air Force trying to counter Carney underneath center again. Anthony Butler goes in motion. They're going to hand off again to Holstead. And Holstead, who is a senior out of Caledonia, Michigan, able to get to the 31-yard line. They're still going to be six yards short of the first down. Sid Slater, the linebacker there to make the stop. Holstead is a guy, according to Fisher DeBerry, just willed himself to be here. His work ethic is so good that he's become a factor on the football team. You know, Gary, it seems like they said that about every player that we talked about yesterday. You have the same character in all of these young men. It's pretty impressive. Second down, make it closer to seven yards to go. And uh, there's the handoff to Stevens getting wide. And he may have the first down as he crosses inside the 25-yard line, knocked down at the 23. Harrison Smith to make the tackle. Stevens out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. Long strider. And I tell you, this guy has some toughness. Almost every offense in the country has this play. He just went in motion, and they give a quick handoff to him as he comes by the quarterback. The speed to get around the corner, Stevens has that speed. Butler has that speed. But basically, I think Cal wins that matchup at speed to the corner. So Stevens got the first down inside the 25. They mark it the 24. Carney wants to throw. Throwing near side. Ball is up. Over shot. The intended receiver. That was Jacoby Kendrick coming out of the backfield. A very impressive sophomore out of Midland, Texas, who could not get there. 
Kendrick is a guy who probably will be their starting fullback next year, but they've moved him to that slot back to get him in the field of play this season. We've already seen three passes with Fisher to Barry Thomas. They're getting back to foundational Falcon football, which is establishing the fullback. Sometimes we don't three see, see three passes in an entire half of Falcon football. Second down, 10 yards to go. So Fisher with a couple of wrinkles here early at the halfback option pass. Uh, Freshman quarterback left. right there, Gary. Audible in at the line of scrimmage. And the guy's got the poise. He keeps it, and he will drive forward those big, strong legs. And the outstanding Air Force quarterbacks, Kelly, through the years, have those big legs where they can bounce off of people, fight for yardage, and there was a good example of it. Yeah, you saw him at the line of scrimmage audibleizing to what we call an advantage audible. They're not going to give him a lot to do at the line of scrimmage, especially early in this game, but there are a couple of things that if you see this look, run this, and that's what he did on that play. Third down and five now at the 20-yard line. Air Force trying to answer. Cal up, 7-0, 720 to go here in this first quarter. Arnie now, he's got to call a timeout. Saw something he didn't like, and again, sometimes... That shows more poise than running a play that won't work. And so, Air Force with a timeout. We'll come back. It's Cal up, seven to nothing. How did the Bears shut down Brett Farm? Oh, don't worry, that's not going to happen. What's this? Sports 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 Take a good look, because you're never going to see this again. You can just look at the ones that are man. I'm not talking about ancient history, Bowman. I'm talking about the three E's. Entertain, enlighten, and insightful. All right, from the top. Sunday NFL Countdown, the hardest working pregame show in football. Begins September 12th on ESPN, presented by O. Hi, I'm Gary Burton, General Manager of Mike Shaw Pontiac Buick GMC in Motor City. Come see me personally for great deals on used cars, trucks, and SUVs, because it's time for a change. For example, several 03 Cavaliers for just $88.88. Truck buyers, look at this fully loaded 03 Dodge Quad Cab for just $22,988. Here at Mike Shaw Motor City, the selection couldn't be better. Whatever your used car or truck needs are, we've got you covered. Right here, right now, at Mike Shaw Pontiac Buick GMC in Motor City. Ain't that right, Brock? That's right, Gary. The last of the 2004s are at your Colorado GMC dealers for the GMC closeout event. There's still a great selection to choose from, including Envoy, Yukon, and Sierra, the most dependable heavy-duty full-size pickup, according to J.D. Power & Associates. Get 5,000 total allowance on select new 2004 GMCs when you finance through your dealer and GMAC, or get 0% APR for qualified buyers. See your participating Colorado GMC dealers during the GMC closeout event. Kelly Stopper and Ann Marie Anderson. I'm Gary Bender. Big third down coming up now for Air Force. 13 plays on this drive thus far. Sean Carney thus far has not looked like a freshman as he continues to march the ball. And he's going to keep on this one. Cuts it up the field. He's got a first down. And he's going to be knocked down at the 11 yard line. So on a third down, they go to the freshman. And he's got the first down. Gutierrez over to make the tackle with safety for California. Impressive, Gary, is the word for this young man. I mean, it is absolutely awesome to see this young man perform this way, and you expected it. Fisher to Barry knows what he's doing, for crying out loud. Pull it, get around the corner, and then he has a read off the pitch man, but the quarterback is tied at Air Force. The first green grass you see, plant your foot and get upfield, and he's doing a good job of it so far. So they continue the drive. They have the ball now at the 11-yard line. Carney keeping again, and this time, is able to chug forward, get a couple of yards on sheer determination. And what you said, Gary, is chug forward. Notice when he has been hit, the pile moves his direction. He is a tough young man. Yes, he is. He is a guy who doesn't look like a freshman, both physically and mentally, as uh, they're going to have now a second down coming up. Second down and five. They reside at the seven-yard line. They can get a first and goal just inside the two. They come out now with one receiver split wide. That is J.P. Waddle. Here is Carney on a handoff in the round to the near side. That is Waller, and Waller is able to get to the five. Where it'll be third and goal from there. And another new wrinkle this time by Air Force. Yeah, you can actually, they're going to actually have a chance to pick up a first down, Gary, inside the two here. But you're seeing a lot of different looks. That didn't look right from the beginning. <laughs> I he know. fumbled the snap, pitched the ball to him, and ended up getting a positive play. 
But well, that's what you see out of these young men. They continue to press forward, and they're taught to make something good out of very little. J.P. Waller out of Bryan, Texas, and it's going to be third down and still a long two, almost three, and a play, the busted play, movement up front that time. So maybe the first mistake of the football game. Very unusual, your first game of the season. Ball, ball start, 57 of the offense, five-yard penalty remains third down and the reason that penalty is so big Gary is not necessarily what it is but where it comes on the field you know they had a chance to pick up a, a first down inside the two and now it's going to be extremely difficult this offense isn't designed to pick up third and long situations they want to be third and preferably four or less to really be effective so it's third down that was Ross Weaver the junior out of Parker Colorado who moved the right tackle in motion comes Butler comes back now here's Carney one to throw he's got it that catch is made by Robert McMenemy. The tight end, six foot four out of Snellville, Georgia. And Carney with his first touchdown touch of his college career. I think he's answering our questions, don't you think, Gary? I believe it. I think every one of them we had, we've seen on this drive. About 15 plays and get the ball in the end zone. That's a quarterback's job, and he did a tremendous job that time. I tell you what, Fisher DeBerry has been here 21 years. you got to believe he saw something special in Carney, and he is delivering here in the early going. Scott Everly to attempt the point after to tie this game. The kick is up, and we're deadlocked at seven. So, Air Force, just as Fisher DeBerry would order it up, a sustained drive. They answer 77 yards and 17 plays. And they'll start the push-up. And you see quarterback's going to come out to the left. Everything is play action at Air Force because they run 80% of the time. He waits for McMinnemy to come across the, the formation from the right to the left. And there he comes into your view, put it on his numbers, and let him score a touchdown. Well, the uh, core hopes they have a lot of push-ups. They'll have a push-up for every point as they come piling out of uh, Falcon Stadium to celebrate this last drive. McMinnemy... A guy who they think is going to be a special tight end. What a big target he is as he came up with that catch. Well, they've had some decent tight ends. Strecker just last year, they, they liked him, but they feel this tight end, McMinnemy, gives them a chance in every aspect of the game. He's very physical at the line of scrimmage. Therefore, he creates a soft edge for this team because they run a lot to the corners, to the edges, but he's also a very good receiving tight end, as we saw right there. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, 17 plays. That's a lot of plays. Oh, on the I'll drive. tell you, you what, what, that is picture perfect for the Air Force Academy football. That is the foundation of this program right there. If you're not now, it's going to be Michael Greenaway. Back deep is Terrell Williams along with Marshawn Lynch. And they'll have the touchback. And let's go to Matt Weiner. Matt. Gary Taco Bell takes us to Philadelphia. Like Air Force, Virginia had a high-profile quarterback to replace, but Marcus Higgins has the luxury of a veteran backfield behind him. That's Wally Lundy bouncing it out left for a three-yard touchdown run. Then in a 10-0 game, it's Wally Lundy one more time. Wahoos have taken a 17-0 lead. All right, Matt, thank you very much. We'll uh, keep updated on that game. After this uh, last play, we've had a penalty. Illegal block, kicking team, number 43. 15-yard penalty. Ball will be recapped. It's an illegal block, Gary, on the kicking team because neither team on a kickoff can go below the waist. Whether yep. you're blocking or whether you're kicking the ball off, and that's what that penalty was right there. Well, now that's going to make a long kickoff, even at high altitude for Greenaway, as uh, they're now announcing the numbers. You probably noticed that. That's a new uh, new rule in uh, college football. That was Andrew Braley, the junior, who's grandson of uh, Jack Braley, who was the Air Force Academy strength coach for so many, many years. Fisher's not happy about the mistake. Fisher's never happy about any mistake. I mean, that's the way he runs his program. He runs a tight ship. These young men are disciplined, and they don't make a lot of mistakes. But look at that, that 70, 17 plays, 77 yards, 6 minutes and 19 seconds. About three more of those, and Fisher DeBerry would be a very happy man. Yes, he there. would. Enemy on the end of a 12-yard uh, touchdown reception. Here is Fisher. Boy, this guy's in the line to be around. Winning this coach and service academy history. What a job he has done. 
Ian's a guy who, when you're around him, you start sounding like him. You start talking like he does down in South Carolina where he grew up. And here's a kickoff by Greenaway, and that went into the end zone by about a yard for the touchdown. That's pretty impressive, and the reason that was such a big deal is Marshawn Lynch, a running back for Cal, who they're extremely high on, almost got his, a chance to get his hands on the ball right there. And I guarantee you, Air Force doesn't want to see that. So they'll bring it out that to the 21. That man right there, number 24. This Watch out was, for him in the future. Sorry yeah, about I'm sorry, Kelly. He's considered the number two running back coming out of high school. He is a load, and we'll talk more about him out of Oakland, California. So from the 20 now, a game tied at 7. 5-17 to go here in the first quarter. Aaron Rodgers with only the second time they've had the football. He gets off to Arrington, and he's gang tackled that time by Air Force. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. Matt? Well, Gary, it seems like just moments ago I was telling you about the veteran Virginia backfield. We saw the Wally Lundy touchdowns. This is Alvin Pierman, the other member of that backfield, this time in the role of punt returner. And a pretty good punt returner, as it turns out. A couple of shoddy tackles there as well, but it's a 70-yard return. Virginia now leads 24-0. Whoa. That's a pretty good beginning, I would think, for Virginia. So now it's going to make up a second down. Cam, a handoff coming off to Arrington. After getting no yardage on the previous play, he may have gotten two. So now Air Force stepped it up because on that initial drive, they were running right at Air Force and having big results. The second drive is an important drive, Gary, because that's where you start to see the first of the adjustments in the game. And right now, Air Force has obviously made the better adjustments as far as their defense versus Cal's offense. I'm a little surprised to see Cal's offense come out, go too tight in, and want to run the football. Air Force would love for this to be a very quick football game today. So now a third down, nine yards to go for the Golden Bears. Rodgers back to throw over the middle, wide open. The catch is made by Garrett Cross, his junior college teammate, and Cross rumbles down to the 30-yard line of Air Force. Big grab by the six-foot-five Chico California product. 49 yards. And Gary, unlike Air Force, right here is is Cross. He's just going to go down the middle of the field. You have to get hands on the on the tight end at the line of scrimmage, if you allow him to press the middle of the field that easily, this is going to be the result. And unlike Air Force, Cal does not mind being in third and nine. They have the offense that is equipped to pick up that kind of down the distance. As evidence there, 49-yard gain to Cross, who had 16 catches a year ago for Cal. First down now at the Air Force 30-yard line. Rogers on the play action, scrambling around, in some trouble. He's going to go down for a loss. Good pressure that time by the Falcons. Danny Poland. We talked about him. He is one of the outstanding secondary men in the Mountain West Conference, a junior out of Pittsburgh. So the loss will come back out to the 34. Denny Poland is, is number 27, and he's what they call a Falcon back here. And it's essentially a strong safety. They play all kinds of games up front. You'll see him come from outside doesn't give up, comes in from behind. There was pressure other places that made the quarterback step up, gave Poland time to get to the quarterback. So it's gonna bring up now second down and 14 yards to go. Here is Rocky, finding some time, getting outside, throwing to his tight end again. This time it's Craig Stevens. And Stevens, a red shirt freshman, with the first catch of his career, Julian Madrid playing in place of the injured Mark Carlson over there. A gain of 17 yards on the play. Good patience by a young quarterback. He's looking downfield. He gets a little pressure, slides outside. Look where he's headed. Still downfield. 51 had to make a decision. Do I go get the quarterback? Do I cover the tight end? He made the wrong decision right there, and Aaron Rodgers made him pay for it. That was Marcus Brown, who was a freshman out of Georgia, the guy who was a little indecisive. Back to throw on a screen, a wide receiver screen. Chase Lyman makes the catch, and that's close to a first down inside the 10-yard line. Lyman, who has just had an outstanding camp. In fact, Jeff Tedford said, watch this guy. He's ready for a breakout season. And isn't like they don't have about four or five guys that you would need to watch but 
he is the guy that he's the Tedford thinks is the next superstar incredible talent he's a great jumper 6'4 215 pounds 210 215 tremendous talent but there are about four other guys just yeah. like him over there I know it that's a first down catch I believe they're gonna see they're looking to the far sideline as a grab made by Craig Stevens guy they almost played last year elected to redshirt him but it was a tough decision for coach Tedford because he knew how talented this guy is and it will be a first down for California. Look at these guys. We're talking about all the time. Well, I mean, but look at this. Huh? And this is the most talented guy, is supposedly is right there, but he didn't actually play. He didn't start his first game until the bowl game, as a matter of fact. And he had a tremendous game, but they can put four guys on the field, and any one of them is a superstar. Well, he started because Jeff MacArthur fractured his arm about five days before the inside goal, and then all Lima did was catch 149 yards and passes and scored a touchdown, a school record for a bowl game. There's a handoff now to Arrington. Arrington bounces inside the five to about the four, where it'll be second and goal there. As Cameron Hodge over to make the stop. Hodge, uh, a guy who has been a backup, now a senior out of Parker, Colorado, to make the tackle. Jeff Tedford has had tremendous success with quarterbacks. You think about the Joey Harringtons and the <laughs> David Carrs and the Kyle Bowlers. That's an amazing list when you start to think about it. And we'll see that here in a while, but that is unbelievable. He's coached five first round picks thus far. This is probably the sixth that we're watching here today. You might still be playing if you've been your coach. Here's a handoff bursting up the middle, wide open. Touchdown, and that's the second touchdown of the day for Arrington. I mean, there was nobody close to him as he made his move up the middle. Way too easy. This deep, this offense can hurt you so many ways, and that was just a very simple zone run to the left side. And if you over pursue the zone to the left, a talented running back who has the vision like Arrington is going to cut it back to the right, and that's what he did there. Tom Schneider, redshirt freshman out of Walnut Creek, will attempt the point after. And his kick is up, and it's now 14-7. to And Amory, you've got more on Aaron Rodgers. Well, yeah, the Cal quarterback took some ribbing from his teammates this year when he was kind of the butt of the joke in a college game day spot. Watch this. Um, will Rogers ch challenge Leonard as the Pac-10's best QB? Can a Puma challenge a lion for the throne? Uh, yeah? No. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10.30 on ESPN. I asked Rogers what his reaction was to that. He said he laughed when he heard about it. Then he thought about it and said, hey, that's about me. He said he's used to being the underdog, <laughs> Joe, so he's not offended. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. They need to get a another lion uniform ready because this young man I don't think is going to be second to well, anyone in the Pac-10 this year. Well, he is uh, in a couple of uh, magazines, the preseason Pac-10 player of the year. He could be a Heisman Trophy candidate. Anthony Benzwanger will kick off now for Cal. There's your answer, Gary, right there. Eight plays, 80 yards. Doesn't take Cal nearly as long, no. but they get it done, and they get it done in a way that's fun to watch. Harrington with a second touchdown of the day. As uh, Mesrol Stevens go back, Vince Wanger to kick off 14 7 Cal. Young now coming back out. Very short kick. He must have really gotten under that. They called for the fair catch. And as an end result, they got it to the 19. And let's go back to Matt. All right, Gary, no Josh Harris for Bowling Green this year. He's gone to graduation. Omar Jacobs, the new man for the Falcons, and off to a good start in Norman. Finds Charles Sharon 18 yards out. Bob Stoops has never lost in September, but he's tied up as we speak. How can you not have a good start in Norman? I don't know that they start any other way in Norman. Well, and uh, Jason White, of course, uh, trying to win back-to-back -back Heisman trophies as uh, Archie Griffin, the only guy to accomplish it. We have an Air Force guy that was being taken to the locker room. We'll upgrade that for you. Update it. It's Carney now as he pitches wide to Darnell Stevens. Stevens to the 27. Let's go to Anne-Marie. Guys, we just saw Charles Grantham and Matt Carlson head off to the locker room. Carlson, you will remember, had that hit early in the game. They're evaluating him for a concussion. They haven't made a decision yet whether he'll come back. Grantham has a left ankle sprain. They're also saying doubtful for the rest of the game. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's coming back, Amber. And you go up on crutches like that, yeah. it's pretty hard to come back. 
So it's going to bring up now second down and three after that uh, pitch to Stevens. Here's Carney. He gives to the dive back up the middle. This time it's Dan Schaefer who's coming back from a serious knee injury a couple of years ago out of Lakewood, Colorado. A guy who's like a stump. Look at the legs on that guy. And uh, he's going to be short of the first down, about a yard short. But look again where Air Force is in third down situations. This is exactly how they play football. Third and a little over a yard, actually. This is where they want to be on third downs. So they will go back to a third down and a yard to go. 50 plus seconds left to go here in this first quarter of play. Holstead goes in motion. Carney Keith, he's got the first down. Good decision. He had Holstead, who was his pitch man, but he kept it tucked under, under his arm, and Donnie McCleskey stopped him, but not until he picked up the first down. And Gary, already on this drive, we've seen the true triple option already three times. The first option is the dive right there to the fullback. They tackle the fullback, the quarterback pulls it, and then makes a decision. He is making incredibly good decisions. His are in the running game. Aaron Rodgers is in the passing game, but decisions nonetheless. What diversity by Air Force. Seven different guys have carried.